Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm visiting the Vauxhall Heritage Centre to take a look for the first ever time for me at a commercial vehicle. This is the Vauxhall Maloo VXR8 LSA. This is a sort of Australian style Oot with a 6.2 litre supercharged V8 that has 544 horsepower and 671 newton metres of torque. With this, as you can see, two seat pickup style format. And before I get too much into it, we're going to have a quick whiz around here. But I've never filmed with a commercial vehicle before of any sort. So that means here in the UK, it's technically a tax a VAT deductionable vehicle, which is kind of cool, except it also happens to have a big stonking over six litre V8 in it. So we're going to take this out for a little drive. Well, I'll show you around it. Then I'll take it out for a drive and explain a little bit more about what it's all about. But before we get to that, Let's just have a little whiz around here because this is basically a toy shop, candy shop, man cave, however you want to call it. This is, well, a wonderful place to be. I mean, we're greeted immediately here by a Lotus Carlton, which was a 177 mile per hour monster. At the time this came out, it was the fastest four door saloon car that existed. Then we have from 1926, the 3098. This was the first British car to ever do 100 miles an hour in 1926. We've got the Monaro VXR 500. You can see dotted around all sorts of pretty special cars from Vauxhall history all around us. So rather enjoying being in here right now. But let's get back to the subject of today's video. The Malou VXR8 LSA. A very, very unusual machine. And I'm going to come around and show you, firstly, two things. One, let's head to the uh, engine bay. Because, well, 0 to 62 miles per hour happens in 4.6 seconds. This is a, uh, a veritable monster with that supercharged engine, which is essentially the same unit from the Camaro ZL ZL1 as well. It's also obviously like the uh, VXR8 GTS that I drove about 18 months ago in a video that I think went down pretty well too. Um, so it made perfect sense to come back and take a look at this today, but that's a bit of a beast up there. The car itself um, is obviously based on Holden's uh, Malou. HSV Holden Special Vehicles in Australia. So this is built in Australia, comes over to the UK, uh, part of the same group. Um, this is, well, there aren't gonna be many of them. It has to go through some very specific testing. And that means about a hundred a year can be brought in. And in fact, Holden are about to stop building these in Australia uh, next year. we the last pr company that produces cars in Australia and unfortunately um, will do no more. I whiz around, I'm going to show you in the pickup here because you can carry 540 kilos of luggage back here. Press the button down there and this lifts up. Now you can't take the top off because it's needed for aerodynamic capabilities when you're running over 500 horsepower. You should probably be quite careful with that. But you can lift that up and open up the rear pickup shelf back here and you literally have a commercial vehicle with some storage space at the rear. But by not having the glass and the rear seats and things that the VXR8 GTS has, you actually save about 100 kilos of weight as well. So, how random is this? I've, I've never filmed a, I don't think I've ever filmed a, an official commercial vehicle before, but we're doing it here now. But let me close this up, because I want to start it up. Oh, that's quite heavy. And um, show you how this sounds, because it does have a bit of a beastly engine to it. Let me jump to the interior. You can have the car with a manual or an auto. This car has the six speed manual gear stick. Keyless start. And um, you've got sort of variable driving modes and all sorts, but we'll play around with this while we're driving. All the things like the EDI system. I'm gonna show you this more in detail when we get back, but that is ridiculously cool. But just listen to this for a second. <laughs> oh, let's get it outside and take this for a little drive.
So I'm not entirely sure how qualified I am to talk about a commercial vehicle. I've never driven anything like this. Oh, GTR going the other way, random. Um, initially, we're driving what is a rather large car, I suppose. You know, we're over five meters long. This was parked next to the Ferrari FF, and this is a very, very big machine. Visibility forwards is great, tiny door mirrors. Visibility backwards is pretty hard because there's a very high rear deck and it basically is like having a really big wing. You can't see that much of what's going on behind you, but then it's a commercial vehicle. At least you can see something. Um, from a power point of view, driving it gently, uh, throttle response is good. You can feel that there's some good pull away. Um, I'm actually in the sport mode and it's not anti-social at all right now. Um, you have a choice of driving modes through the driver mode selector here in the center. Um, where you can go into tour mode, which closes the valves on the bimodal exhaust system. Ah, you can see it all there, touring mode. Uh, puts traction control in the most sort of sensible setting. Can I bring that back up? Uh, stability control, steering, in, still in sport, even in tour mode. And launch control is disabled. Then you can go through sport, where it gets a little bit norm, uh, noisier. Steering goes into competition. Um, or you can go one more to the right to performance where basically traction control goes into competition The uh, launch control is then enabled so when you come to a stop you can give it some revs And you only have that launch in the manual gearbox version of this car But driving like this is actually pretty civilized and normal um, Ride obviously it's, it's a big car, but it's it's riding quite nicely the weight doesn't feel Particularly over the top it doesn't feel as heavy as I thought it might do um, let's just flip it down. Yeah, there we go. You've got that V8. Give it a little bit of power. It's quite a lot of power. It feels very muscle. It feels very sort of American muscle. And that's what these oots are. They're like, I guess, pickup format crossed with noise and power that comes from having a whopping big V8, whether you are using it all or not. Obviously, economy is not going to be the greatest. Uh, well, it's not that bad actually. It's something like combined 15 mpg, um, which, when you consider the size of the engine and what we're driving, um, and the fact that you can lug 500 and something kilos of weight in the boot while you do it, it's not all that bad. So we've got loads of the sort of entertainment side of things. It's all very nicely set up. Good amount of, uh, I guess, electronics and driver aids and the parking system, for example, you can parallel or. Uh, perpendicular park using the automatic system uh, which I haven't tried but I love all that kind of tech and fun stuff um, you can go through all the things on the dash and you've got a nice set of displays there maybe I'll show you more of the interior when we get back eek that was a commercial vehicle who did not have enough room to squeeze through a gap coming towards us should be driving something a bit smaller <laughs> um, we've got because it's a Vauxhall you've got lights on the right and wipers on the left they are backwards but being lights on the white, you can do your lights while you're changing gear and that kind of stuff. Oh, we've got a little bit of a, uh, a bridge. <laughs> that was good. So, a commercial vehicle with a V8. What is this as a concept? Um, <laughs> it's, it's intriguing, that's for sure. Like, the idea of it here in the UK is a little bit more, I guess, alien than it might be in the US or in um, Australia, obviously, where there are long distances to go. Uh, and fuel is a slightly different game in the UK is taxed quite highly so uh, uh, Not necessarily the best, but this is I think a, a quirky fun version of a Company kind of car the way you can use it to lug stuff around take things as you need um, But in a style that's gonna make people go. Oh, that's interesting and imagine one of these live read up in a brand kind of design um, just Sorry, I'm enjoying the, uh, the noise too much. Um, just cruising through the countryside. I'm not really driving on the motorways or anything right now. Um, but I also love this system. I've got a head up display, which is nice too. It's telling me the speedo. I've got my rev counter. Um, revs up to, well, the red line is at six and a half maybe. Um, the indicator, sorry, the, the counter goes up to 8,000. Top speed limited to 155 miles an hour, 250 kilometers an hour. So there's plenty enough of uh, speed available for you. But just cruising along, it feels really cool. If I had to drive a car in which I was carrying around some luggage, this would be the one. I think the only thing 
that might annoy some people maybe is the fact that you have to you have to have the lid on the rear deck. You can't use too much space um, because otherwise the aerodynamics go wrong. Given that you can drive 150 miles an hour and you uh, can accelerate pretty quickly, and otherwise you just have this turbulent vacuum going on with all sorts of stuff causing trouble back there. But for driving around, other than the fact it's huge and I'm not looking forward to having to park it. I think it's an interesting concept and I love it as an idea. I love the, 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 the sort of thought that goes into, let's take the massive engine and put it into a commercial car. Commercial vehicle, it's not a car, it's a van, it's a truck. But yeah, <laughs> he says. Um, let me keep on driving, see if I come up with any more thoughts as I go. Just a moment ago, I went past some builders at the side of the road, and they were all staring immediately. They spotted, I guess, the bright red, and then they were looking. And as I got close, they were sort of doing the revit, revit. So I gave it a little blip, and they all cheered. And I think that's because, I guess, this must be the kind of car that appeals in that world. But now that I'm out on a nice open road where I can properly use it, let's put some pad up. Whoa, okay, it's a little bit playful. Not surprising, long wheelbase, engine up front, and a lot of power to the rear wheels lot of power it is very quick he says just concentrating slightly because as I drive it more I'm loving it it's a lot of fun and I'm starting to feel you know the steering's quite heavy the pedals are super responsive um, very very sensitive and twitchy which I guess gives it a kind of sporty driving feel and then you've got that constant noise of the V8 going on behind you just bring it down to a slightly slower speed just so I can drop down a few gears when you get up to the top, you get a sort of crack and snap off it. You get lovely downshift noises if you hit them to blip them. I mean, this is this is just a ridiculous concept, but it's executed so brilliantly. It's so much fun. Like, what? This makes no sense. No sense at all. But I love it. What am I actually driving here? What have Vauxhall and Holden made? I don't even... <laughs> thought that a vehicle that was built primarily for transporting goods could be so much fun to go out and drive. This is such a ridiculous concept. And the engine sound. Yes, it's getting a little bit slippy when you put down a lot of power. That's not surprising. It's a very cold winter day. It's four degrees right now. But I'm having an absolute blast driving this. I don't really want to have to give it back. Up towards the top end, you start to feel more of the supercharger. You hear a little bit of the supercharger whine, but it's not intrusive, it's not uncomfortable. And the power does seem to come in quite nicely as well, which I guess is a little bit surprising. You might think that it's only gonna be up there right at the very top. But let's go back to driving a little bit more gently. Let's pop it in touring mode, cruise around. I'm, I'm kind of surprised reflecting on this, that driving it quite aggressively on countryside roads it doesn't feel like, um, I don't know, any lack of control to the suspension. It feels very supportive. I guess you might think that given the, the sort of shape and the lack of weight at the rear that it might be breaking away a little bit more, but it's not completely unreasonable. Yes, it's slipping because we're driving in, like I said, four degrees, um, cold winter's day, but it's not unbalanced in a way that you might think for something quite so large. Um, and like I've said, I guess a few times now, it's taken me totally by surprise as a fun thing to be driving. It's about 54 and a half thousand pounds for the car. With that, you get a very high specification, it comes with pretty much everything you might want standard, the EDI, the nav, the leather, and you've got a nice kind of half leather um, with a little bit of uh, other kind of materials going on on the inside as well. Um, good sort of displays, head up display, uh, entertainment and that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna head back uh, park the car up and show you a little bit more around the inside of this um, and kind of reflect on my short little drive. I don't even really know what I have just driven. This thing is an absolute hoot, if you can excuse the pun. But let me just, while I'm sitting here, give it a couple of blips. Um, you can hear this from the outside as well, just to kind of fully take in the exhaust sound in this car pops and crackles all the way back down. Pretty, pretty. 
pretty awesome. And that's in sport mode, which you can see up there at the top right. If I toggle the driver mode selector here, um, you can see it goes left into tour, sport or performance. And then when I had this in the EDI, if I go back in there, as I go through the different modes, it just brings up the uh, information I vaguely told you about while we were driving. Then you can turn traction control off with the center, of course, and you've got your electric handbrake and your parking thing uh, for the automatic parking and obviously your rear view camera um, type stuff uh, and parking sensors if you put it into reverse, which is forwards and right. Um, there we go. Um, so that uh, all pretty self-explanatory. You've got your climate control settings underneath, all your controls for the uh, entertainment system here. So what else do we have? Let's just have a quick flick around, play with some buttons, um, and show you what we can see. Vauxhall based here in Luton, just north of London. Um, it's all generally quite a nice system. Um, works pretty well, uh, or at least for what I am experimenting with anyway. Um, so we'll move on from that. This digital display in the center here is controlled through the stalk. So you've got a couple of different menu pages that you can go through and then when you're in a menu you can toggle this up and down to go through different um, display screens showing you well all your usual kind of stuff you'd expect to see in here. Um, or Pretty self-explanatory, really. Steering wheel, large, nice feel to it, um, but very much in the style of a commercial, I guess, vehicle. Um, you've got the Holden Special Vehicles embroidery up here on the dashboard. You can just see that. Um, the Vauxhall VXR logo on the headrest. So, let me uh, stop the car. Do so with that. The key I have right here. Normal Vauxhall key. Pop that in my pocket and jump out to take a final kind of look around this thing. And one, uh, one sort of concept actually I'm going to touch on very quickly, given that I've got my Ferrari FF part next to it, that is a substantially more common car, the Ferrari, than a VXR8 LSA balloon, which is <laughs> quite a bizarre concept. But what, like, like, how do I begin to touch on this as a car. It's not something I really am very familiar with. All I can say is that driving it has done this. It made me smile a lot. The sound of it, the look of it. It looks aggressive. You can see the way the front styles out, down sort of slanted out towards the front. Come around the back, you've seen already, but the, uh, the quad exhaust tips. It's what it is. It's a statement, isn't it? It's a proper like, yes we can to an idea that is just absurd. Um, but I've really enjoyed driving the car. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Know a little bit more now about the Malou LSA than you probably did before. But I'm gonna wrap it up there. Big thanks to Vauxhall for having me out to drive the car. I've really enjoyed it today. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.